I'm David Wood, curator of the Concord Museum, and we're in the exhibition Beyond Midnight, Paul Revere and His Ride. We're going to look here at the works of two visual artists and two poets, and we'll begin with the most famous account of Revere's Ride, which is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride, published in Tales of a Wayside Inn. Longfellow wrote his poem in 1860 on the very verge of the Civil War, and as a committed abolitionist himself, he was warning his audience that clear and present danger takes action on the part of those who are committed to the cause. Revere was the perfect example for him to choose. The visual artist is N.C. Wyeth, who in the 1920s was illustrating a uh, an edition of Longfellow's poem. So he's certainly drawing on the imagery that Longfellow creates with words, but I, I think we also have to give Wyeth credit for capturing the active revere that we meet in the deposition of 1775. A wonderful detail of this manuscript is the marginal note here, which Longfellow's indicated as an insert with a capital letter A in the text and in the margin. And what, what he has is an alternative uh, for uh, one of the most famous lines in here. This one reads, one for the land and two for the sea, which isn't the way it ended up, but he's, he's clearly trying it out. This pair deals with the events that occurred about eight hours after Revere was captured in Lexington. This is the, uh, these both deal with the battle at the North Bridge. Uh, one, the poet's work is Ralph Waldo Emerson's original hymn, which was sung at the dedication of the uh, obelisk that marked the site at the North Bridge in 1837. And the other is uh, Daniel Chester French's uh, reduced size version of his Minuteman. Uh, the full scale one is, was dedicated at the North Bridge in 1875. These works demonstrate art's ability to powerfully convey messages of history in that Emerson's line, shot heard round the world, instantly conjures up the first battle of the revolution as does the sight of Daniel Chester French's Minuteman. And as Longfellow's line, one if by land, two if by sea, unavoidably brings up the image of Paul Revere.